service was ordered for you. I, I just, I, I really feel sorry for those who turned over in the bed and looked and said, you know what, I, 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 I just, I'm a little tired. I just don't feel like being there. I don't feel like going, you know, but you got here. You got here. You, you know, the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, seeing the day that is coming. That, that, that talks of not only the day of the Lord's return, but also the, the last days that we're living in that become more evil than ever before. And, and all around us, we're seeing the violence, we're, we're seeing the evil, we're seeing the things that are, are just, why, 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 why would that happen? But the Bible tells us that it's going to be there. But I, I, I know this, I've been walking with the Lord for 47 years, and, and there is two things, now of course the word, but there's two things that have got me through 47 years of tough times, hard circumstances, tragedy, situations that looked like it was impossible, sickness, infirmity, pain. There's something that's got me through that. When it, when it looked like that I was not going to be able to pay the bills or, 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 or we had to sell one of our cars to, to, to get down to one car just, just so we could make it. I, I know what it is to, to have a car that you are shouting and dancing just because it got you to where you were going. You have no idea if it's going to get you back, but you're shouting and praising because it got you Thank God for rubber bands and duct tape and now gorilla tape. And I don't know if anybody else has been in those situations, but I'm talking about, I'm talking from experience. You know, one thing that Tave and I love to do, Tave and I love to go into ice cream shops. Every place we visit or go, we will find the local ice cream shop. And every time we go in there, we're always looking at this board, and this board always has all the different flavors, or what we call the flavor of the day. Everywhere you and I go, businesses are always highlighting and spotlighting something that literally distinguishes them from everybody else in the marketplace. There are flavors that distinguish you and I as Christians from people who are not Christians and people that are in trouble, have no hope, they're empty, they, they, they look at things that are just totally impossible. But we're different because in our differences, we have something that can be seen and can be heard. It is called joy that can be heard and can be seen. It is called peace that can be heard and can be seen. And it is called praise that can be heard and can be seen. And it's called prayer that can be heard and seen. I'm not talking about a temporary happiness. See, before I was saved, I tried to be happy. If everything was going the way I wanted it to go, I was happy. But if it unhappened and didn't go the way I wanted it to go, I was unhappy. So what, what would I do during that time? I would turn to my music at that time. I was a Motown man. I would turn to that music. And before I was saved, before I was saved, I would go by the convenience store. Don't look at me self-righteous as if you were born saved. Never cursed, never did anything. You were an angel. And that's why when, when babies are born, look at my angel. No, 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 your baby ain't no angel. We're all born with a sinful nature on the inside of us. Don't get saved and forget what other people are going through. As if you can't relate to them getting all up in here. 
No, I used to, let, let me, is it okay if I just, you've heard my testimony. When I was going through stuff, I would stop by a convenience store. I would get me a beer because that's the only way I could get happy again. And then I'd turn on the radio and I'd hear something like this. But let me tell you something. Are you ready for this? I don't live there anymore. Turn to somebody next to you and say, I don't live there anymore. No, sir, I don't need that now because God changed me when he saved me. He took me out of that depression. He took me and delivered me from addiction and alcohol and, and, and joints and everything. Else. He delivered me from that. I don't need that. I don't need to have a nip of a sip at night to try to help me to sleep because my Bible tells me God will give his beloved sweet sleep. I don't do that now when I got problems. I don't sing that I wish it would rain. The devil will try to rain on your parade. I don't sing that. Now, now when something happens, now when I have a bad report, now when something's going wrong, now when the circumstances keep building and, 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 and I'm speaking to the mountain and I'm standing on the Word of God and it seems like that it just keeps growing and, and it seems like that the light at the end of the tunnel is the oncoming train. Now when that happens, I do something different. I don't go to get alcohol. I don't go to light up and smoke a joint. I don't have to do those things. Now, all I have to do is pray and praise. Because now when something happens, I will get in my house, I will get in my car, no matter where I'm at, I'll turn on the radio and I'll take my phone, punch in the song, and something like this now will come on. to really get happy and when I really need to get happy like I like I did this morning like we did this morning in our bathroom and we turned on this somebody sit down <laughs> hallelujah This is called practical Christianity. If you want religion, you're in the wrong place. That's the flavors that distinguish us. That's what can be seen. And that's what can be heard when we're going through the toughest and the hardest times in the world. Think about this. The first message ever heard from heaven to a world in the bondage of sin, sorrow, sadness, sickness, addictions, and spiritual poverty, identity crisis, and emptiness was a message of great joy. Listen to this in Luke, the second chapter, verse 10 and 11. This is, yes, this is from God. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now think about Peter. When, the, when, the, when, the, when all the tribes are going through some horrific things. This, this is when, now listen to this. This is when they had actually lost their possessions. They had lost their homes. They were scattered everywhere. They were getting out just to, just to save their lives and the lives of their children. 
Many of them were put in prison and, and they were beaten and just all kinds of crazy things happening to them. But then Peter writes this to them in 1 Peter, the first chapter, verse 3 and 9. He says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of, Christ, of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that it does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. Yes, we have an inheritance in heaven, but we're not there yet. Here, we have troubles, we have trials, we have tribulations. And in, in, in any Christianity that, uh, or any word that people teaches you as if you're never going to have trouble, you're never going to go through anything, is not teaching out of the Bible that I see. Because the Bible says you are going to go through some stuff. I mean, Jesus said that himself. But watch this. He said, your inheritance incorruptible is reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept, now this is talking about right now, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And by the way, we are living in the last of the last of the last days. He says, in this you greatly rejoice. You know what the word rejoice there means? It means happy dance. It means... It means jump up and down, spin around, shout. It says, in this you greatly rejoice that though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise Honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory. And by the way, the word glory there actually means praise. Full of glory, full of praise, receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls. Notice in verse 5, he says this, you are kept by the power of God through faith. The word kept there means guarded and protected because, his, because of his promises that I believe and by faith I'm praying them. You're kept, you're guarded, you're protected. But notice it's this, he says you're guarded and protected by the power of God through faith. See, there's, see th th listen to me. The, the Bible says the demons even believe that there is a God. Even the demons believe. The thing is, you and I can believe, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But here's what the world is waiting to see. The Bible says, the, in Romans it says, the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. What are these manifestations? I'll tell you what the world's seen. The world doesn't want to see us go and get drunk like they do. Like I did before I was saved. They don't want to see us shooting up and walking around our car full of, uh, uh, of smoke, uh, smoking dope. They, they don't want to see that. The world is looking for a genuineness of a faith that people really believe that will give them hope in a hopeless society, in a hopeless world. When they're empty and feel worthless and, and don't know what to go do and put all the facades on just like I did, living a fake life, they want to see somebody that's going through hell and yet keeps right on going. They want to see somebody that will not hold back and pray because they're ashamed and they're afraid of what somebody may th think about them. I'll tell you, there's been many a times, right, in the health plex when I go work out and people will say, well, I'm going through this and I'm going through that. I say, let me pray for you. They don't care who's in there. They don't care if I'm there when they start cussing. They, 
They don't even go, shh, there's a preacher over there. No, they just get right on with it. Well, I can get right on with what I believe. And I can have my praise. And I can have my prayer. But he says, I'm kept by the power of God through faith. It means I'm guarded and protected because his promises. Because of his promises. But see, I'm guarded and protected by what I believe. And what I believe, what I believe will come out of my heart if it's in my heart. If it's just in my head, it may come out just for a little bit. But if it's in my heart, it'll leak out all the time. How's it going to leak out? By the fruit of my lips. People are going to hear it. They're, they're, going to, they're, they're, they're going to hear what I believe. They're going to see what I believe. In verse 6, it says this. It says, even though, it says this, in, in this you greatly rejoice, though for a little while you have been grieved by various trials. Trials do produce grief. Number two, they do produce grief at the onset of situations. Even Jesus said this, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. Everybody say peace. peace. This is supernatural. It's a fruit of this Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. He said in the world you will have tribulation. You're going to have problems. You're going to have circumstances. You're going to have issues. You're going to have all kinds of things happen. But he said be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if he lives on the inside of me, that means that I too with him and through him, I am an overcomer. Matter of fact, the Bible says I'm not just a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. And then it, then it, then it, says, then it says this. It says in verse 7, he says that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire. That means some of us going through some fiery trials. Some situations. He said, even though it's tested by fire, watch this, may be found in the fire, going through the fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the Word, so at the revelation of the Word of God. He said, even though you're going through fire, here's what's going to be found. What's going to be found is a genuineness, and a genuineness is a person that is praying and praising, a person that is standing by faith, and he's letting or she's letting other people know. See, trials let people see and know that my faith is genuine. I'm not a fake. I'm not just a Sunday attender, that I am a Christian. Inside, outside, through in, through out, I am a born-again Spirit-filled believer. And trials, when they come, tribulations, circumstances, when they come, they let people know that my faith is the real deal because they see my faith, because faith can be seen, and they hear my praise. As we face the 21st century world, the Bible calls it the last days with all of its trouble and violence and confusion and racism and pain and brokenness. Division, identity crisis, turmoil, emptiness, gross immorality, addictions, and with all of its difficulties and sadness, there is nothing more important today, nothing more important that we who call ourselves Christian, who name the name of Jesus, should be representing our faith in such a way before others as to give them the impression that here is the solution, here is your answer. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you are the solution. You are the answer. That's what the world needs to see. They need to see that. They need to see and know that we, we go through the same things, but we handle it differently. In this world where everything has gone sadly astray, we should, be, we, we, we should be standing out as the men and women of God. People characterized by a fundamental joy, peace, faith, and praise. Yes, we go through grievous times. Yes, we go through hurt. It hurts us. 
When we lose a loved one, it hurts us. When we lose anything, it hurts us. When, when, when people walk out on us and think, it hurts us. But yet at the same time, I will go through that grief. I will go through that pain. But my life will not be characterized as a depressed person, as an oppressed person. My life will be characterized by a fundamental joy, peace, faith, and praise. And these characteristics... These characteristics are mine, spite all of the conditions in the world, spite of the trials, adversity, circumstances, or whoever is in the White House. Our attacks and testings and trials come because of our anointing. They don't come because the devil has just picked you out and I feel, you feel like you're on an island by yourself and you're the only one. No. There's demons, principalities, powers all over the place attacking people, trying to mess things up, stirring up circumstances and stuff. But everything that comes is because of our anointing. It is because of the Word of God. The Bible says the devil comes immediately to steal the Word. It's because of the Word of God. Because I'm standing on the Word of God. Because the larger the trial and the circumstances, the greater the testimony. And the devil knows that. So he doesn't want you to come out. He wants you to quit. See, that's who we are. That's our identity. We are the anointed of God. We are the children of and the sons and the daughters of God. And this, this is for us, just like it is for anybody else. In Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4, Jesus read this in Luke, the fourth chapter. When he came out of the wilderness, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Not only is the Spirit of God upon you right now, but it's in you. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. The word poor there means the oppressed, the hurting, the bruised. He said to preach the good tidings. What is a good tiding to an oppressed person? You don't have to stay oppressed. You don't have to stay in that condition. You don't have to stay inside of this forever. You don't have to turn to alcohol. You don't have to turn to opiates. You don't have to turn to all of this stuff. There is available to you the power of the living God. There is available to you the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. There is available to you a strength, a power that is not known to man. It can take you through every situation, everything that there is. He said, the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings. That's the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Listen, what I'm reading is our identity. This is who we are. This is, this is not just for intercessors. This is not just for pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets and apostles. This is for all of us. This is who we are. People in the world are waiting for the anointed ones to not be ashamed of the anointing. And I'm going to tell you when, you, you, when you get your focus on praying and praising and helping other people and praying for them and seeing them deliver, I'm going to tell you right now, your deliverance will be there before you ever know it. Some of the quickest times that I've ever got prayer and got deliverance is when I got mad at the devil and started praying for other people. Started praying for other people. I couldn't cook very well, but I could go to fast food and pick up a happy meal and take it to somebody. Say, God just put this on my heart to bring this to you. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Turn to somebody next to you and say, he's talking about you now. Turn to the one on the other side has got the attitude and said, you better listen. <laughs> he said, watch this, to proclaim liberty to the captives. We're not captive anymore. We've been set free, but proclaim liberty to the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Those that are in addictions and other things, just like I was. There is freedom and there is liberty. That's good news. I heard that good news and God delivered me and set me free. 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. Hey, let me, let me, let me share something real quickly with you. Did you know that when Jesus, in Luke the fourth chapter, opened this up and started reading it, he got in the middle of a scripture and stopped and left out the rest of the scripture. You know what he left out? You can read it tonight or this afternoon, whenever, but it's in Luke, the fourth chapter. Here's what he left out. He stopped with to proclaim the acceptable year of God, and he stopped right there, closed the book, and he did not read the day of vengeance of our God. Because, see, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save it. Because he knows that the wrath of God would be poured out. He, he knows the day of judgment is coming. It's called the book of Revelation. The tribulation. He knew that. But right then, he stopped. And he said, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you about the acceptable year of God. Because of Jesus, God accepts you. God loves you. He cares for you. He will deliver you. And, and, and then he goes on to say, to comfort all who mourn. We all mourn. Tave and I know what it is to mourn. We know what it is to receive the comfort of not only the body of, the body of Christ, but the comfort of the Holy Spirit. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. That means when life's and been messed up, burned up, there's nothing. I mean, they've been through the fire and there's nothing but ashes. God can give you beauty for ashes. He'll give you the oil of joy for mourning. That's the Holy Spirit coming up on the inside of you when you just start your praise. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you want to get rid of that heaviness, the spirit, you want to drive that spirit off, get into praise. Turn up your radio. Turn up your CD player or whatever you have. Turn it up. And get into praise. The spirit of heaviness can't stay there. I'm telling you right now, you get that praise going. The Bible says that, that, that uh, the, the devil is Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies. A fly will not light on a hot stove. And if it does, it's like a bug, bug zapper. Bzz. It's what will happen to every demon that tries to come around when you get into praise. No matter what you see that's going on. That they may call, be called the, the, the trees of righteousness. Let me tell you this story real quick. It says in Acts the 16th chapter, now it happened as they went to prayer. Here, here's Paul and Silas along with other disciples. They're, they're going to prayer. And he said they went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met them. The word divination there means python. Python. The spirit of python. The serpent. She was demon possessed. As another, as another scripture says. By, and, and she brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. See, it's amazing to me how many Christians call psychics. And read horoscopes. There's a reason that it's called horoscope. Because <laughs> it's horrible. And it's not good for you. Amen. And demonic spirits are behind all of that stuff. The Bible tells us this girl followed Paul and us, cried out, said, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. In the original Greek, it does not say the way. The translators put it that way. In the original Greek, it says, They proclaim to us a way of salvation. In other words, not the only way, just a way. Well, she did this for many days, but Paul, I love Paul. Paul got greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And he came out that very hour, and when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And, they, and when they draw, drug them in, he said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. 
man, I tell you what, I wish we could stir up some stuff in the city. Stir up some stuff. Why? By coming against everything the devil is trying to do. But now listen to this. Listen to this. Because of what they did, they, they were on their way to the prayer meeting. And then they cast the devil out of this woman, and then people got really upset. I'm telling you, when you start talking about the things of God and the power of God and everything, religion will get upset. People can get upset. And they can attack you and persecute you and do, do all kinds, lies about you, slander you, say all kinds of things. They, 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 they can uh, try to stir up all kinds of trouble. And here's what happened. Not only, not only did they drag them in front of the magistrates, but they whipped them. They whipped them so hard and so bad, they, they, and, and literally they took off their clothes and whipped them. Where there were stripes all over them. So you thought your problem was bad. They whipped them, stripped them down to naked in front of everybody. You talk about shame. And then took them and gave them over to the jailer. And the jailer put them into the inner prison, which was the dungeon, in stocks. In stocks. But let me tell you about the genuineness of their faith. But at midnight... But at midnight, that means in the darkest of the darkest of the darkest hour, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. The word hymns there means praise. They were singing praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. See, when you get in your midnight hour, and it seems that you're in the deepest, darkest dungeon of your life, and everything is lights out, and you're in stock, and the devil seems he's got you, here's your key. Don't stop praying. Pray. And begin to sing. And begin to praise God. Amen. Thank you. Do I have any crazy praisers in the house? Don't you go to sleep on me. I've been up since 4.30 praying for you to get this. I got to get over to something because I, I, I got to show you this. Hold on just a minute. Let me, let me get over here. Real quickly, because I got to show you something. Tell your neighbor, hang on. Hang on, neighbor. He's going to show us something. Watch this. Watch this. I, I, I got it right here. I got it right here. Boom. Boom. The Bible says they were praying and praising. I believe with all my heart, I know exactly the psalm that they were praying and praising. Watch this. In Psalms 142, this is not even in my notes. In Psalms 142, verse 5, I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry. For I am brought very low. You can't get any lower than in the dungeon. Deliver me from my persecutors. For they are stronger. Now in the natural, they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison. Bring my soul out of prison. That I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me and you shall deal bountifully with me. Oh, God, bring my soul out of prison. And the Bible now says that when they did that, listen to this, suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. In the Greek, that word means suddenly. Suddenly. See, if you want to see a suddenly, you got to get some pray 
and you guys get some praise on. Suddenly, suddenly, I need my praise team and my orchestra out here real quick, real quick. Y'all put that coffee down, put those donuts down, and get out here. Suddenly, suddenly, there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. You want some shaking and baking going on? To shake the foundations of the very things. Don't stand back there. We're going to do every praise. But at midnight. Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Somebody is waiting to hear your praise. Somebody that you work with, somebody that your neighbors, somebody that you've been talking to, and somebody is just waiting to hear your praise in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your problem. Suddenly, Tell your neighbor, get ready, neighbor, get ready. Suddenly there was a great earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. And because of what God did, a whole house full got saved. Somebody's just waiting to hear your praise. Because when they do, it's going to change their life. They're going to see the genuineness of your faith, and people are going to get saved. You want to know how people are going to get saved? You want to know how people are going to come to Jesus? Not just because there's a church. It's because you're out there praying and praising in the midst of your trials. And they say, I know what you're going through, and I see your joy. I hear your praise, and I hear your praise. I believe this morning with all my heart, as you begin to praise him, I believe there's going to be a shaking. I believe that the foundations that the devil and the strongholds, the devil's been trying to build, I believe they're going to be shaken, and the prison doors are going to go wide open. Come on. Come on, stand up. You ready for this? I'm believing that the church will start getting back to our praise and joy. In the, li, li, listen to this scripture. This is amazing to me. There was an earthquake, foundations. But now listen to the children of Israel. When the glory of God manifests, listen to what he says. And all the people went up after him. That was after Solomon to worship. All the people went up after him. I just am believing that somebody is going to follow me in my praise, in my prayer, in my excitement for Jesus. Listen to this. All the people went up after him, and the people played flutes and rejoiced with great, that's, this word great means mega, with mega joy, now listen to this, so that the earth seemed to split with their sound. Now that's a praise, that's a shout. On three, see if you can split the ground with your shout. One, two, three, Jesus!
The Bible said that when the enemies heard it, they said, what is all this noisy uproar? What is all this noise about? See, you don't want to have a shout without clout. You shout because you know who your God is. You shout because you know He is your deliverer. He is your healer. He is your provider. Whatever circumstances you face, don't give me that grimace and don't start complaining and murmuring. What gets me is there's no place in the Bible where it says Paul and Silas first began to complain and murmur. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, it hurt. They cried. It hurt. I mean, it hurt them big time. But once they got past that, they knew exactly where to go and what to do. They started praying, and I believe in Psalms 142, that's what they prayed. They were praying, and then they started praising The Lord spoke to my heart this morning and he said, so many of my people have allowed their circumstances to take away their praise to me. He said, son, you tell them get back into their praise and thanksgiving. I understand what they're facing. They've brought it to me. I know what they're going through. But he said there are people around them that need to hear their praise and see their, see their praise, hear their praise because it's going to make a difference in somebody else's life. The jailer and the whole household got saved because they chose to pray and to praise. There are people right on the verge that know you that could be saved if they just heard your prayer and praise. Be ashamed of it. It's your deliverance. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to give you an opportunity if you've never received Jesus as the Lord of your life. I'm going to tell you, nothing changes in your life. I know that for a fact. In your life. You may think, oh, I can handle everything. No. That means you're blind. You're blinded to the truth, the truth of reality. I can handle anything and everything. No, no, you can't. If you could, you wouldn't be in the mess you're in right now. No, you're not a God. There is one God. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die so that you could be saved. So that you could come back in relationship with Him who created you. You're out of that relationship. It's empty. Has no meaning to life, no purpose. Confusion is there everywhere. Roller coaster ride with your emotions and everything else. But when you receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, God will forgive you of all your sins. And I'll tell you this He can deliver you out of your addictions, just like He did me. He'll deliver you out of every addiction. Every stronghold, every addiction can be broken. The moment you say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. If you believe that in your heart, that Jesus is the only way to the Father. He's the only way for you to be saved and born again. And you confess Him with your mouth. And you confess Him as Lord and repent of all your sins. He will come inside of you to save you. And you'll see differently than you've ever seen before in your life. You'll be a brand new person. Brand new. God will deliver you and set you free. Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know what? I grew up in religion. I saw a whole bunch of stuff and I got turned off with church and everything else. But you know what? My life is falling apart. I, 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 I received Jesus as Lord of my life one time, but I got away from God. I backslid. But today I want to come back. I want to come back. If you want to be born again, receive Jesus. Lord, the forgiveness of your sins. Spirit of God, come to live on the inside of you. You want to be restored back into fellowship from where you've fallen. I want to pray this morning. If that's you, all I want you to do is raise your hand and say, Pastor, I want to be in that prayer this morning. I want to be in that prayer. I want to be saved or I want to come back into a relationship with God. If that's you, just stick up your hand right where you are. 
at your seat. Just stick up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, sir. God, yes, ma'am. God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else before we pray? Anybody else before we pray? Anybody else? Yes, sir. God bless you. Anyone else before we pray? Receive Jesus as the Lord of your life or to come back into fellowship with God. Anybody else? I'm getting ready to pray. Anybody else? All right, all of you that raised your hands, I want you to pray this with me. and We're all going to pray together with you, and we're going to pray according to the Word of God. Pray this with us out loud. Father God, thank you this morning that you love me. You love me enough to send your own Son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. And I believe Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe he died and you raised him from the dead. This morning, I repent of all my sin and I ask your forgiveness in Jesus' name. And today, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. And I thank you now for a brand new life. Thank you for healing me, delivering me, Thank you for being, uh, that I'm brand new. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Amen.